One of the best way for studying any topic is simply by going through its terminology and understanding it. There are two reasons for that. One, if you study it without dissecting the terminology, you will face that terminology and need to study it in any way. So why not start by studying the terminology and dissecting it and with this we will start studying data science. This is part one. In data science, the first two terms that we face are data and science. By science, we simply mean the scientific method. In our case, the computer is wearing a white a clock and with it, it's doing experiments on the data we provide it. Just like the standard scientific method, it's making observations, we are thinking of hypotheses, we formulating this hypothesis, we refined it, we develop a model and then we simply uh, run it on the model and of course on the way we test it, exactly like the scientific method and this is why it's called data science. With data means that our experiments as of today are on data. But this is not limited because in future the machines could also do real experiments on real world. So today it's data science, but in the future, who knows, it's just machines doing uh, scientific experiments. So the machines are consuming uh, data. You provide the machines with two things, with two terms we can say. One is the data that you provide to the machine and the second is the learning uh, algorithm. This is different from standard programming because in standard programming you give it also data, so this is common from data science and machine learning and standard programming, but in our case you don't give it the exact algorithm to solve the problem, but you give it a learning algorithm, so the machine will have some work to do in order to reach some kind of a model. You can say that it's an intermediate a step. You don't give it directly the programming um, code, but you give it some hints about what your program could be and the machine is doing the extra steps in order to reach the program. It's like it's writing the program uh, for you. It's writing the steps. You give it the hints on how to actually program in order to reach the solutions. And then when the machine has reached the program, just like a standard program that you provide to it, it will find solutions to the problem that you give it. So our terms here were data and the learning uh, algorithms, which we have uh, multiple such uh, algorithms. The next two terms are trends and predictions. And this is the result you expect. This is the work that you expect your computer to do. You expect your computer to identify a hidden trends in the data that it would be, maybe you could do that, but it would be difficult for you and for each and new data, you want the computer to recompute the trends. Not only you want the computer to, to leverage, to, to, to show you those trends, you also want the computer to make predictions based on leveraging these trends. So the computer found some trends and then it leveraging it and it gives you predictions. It can also compute uh, probabilities for possible outcomes. So if you don't know the outcome of some process, let's say you have an animal and you give it a different kind of plant and you want to predict uh, what are the probabilities that it will get uh, fatter, what are the probabilities that the animal would be healthier, then you can consult with the computer on this. So we have seen predictions, trends and computing uh, probabilities. <clears throat> the receipt, the receipt for making any uh, data science uh, learning uh, process is composed out of four steps. The first step is the data preparation. This is our term here, simply data preparation. If you don't give, provide good enough data to the computer, the best algorithm won't do you a good job. So you need to concentrate and focus on clean uh, data, uh, on the size of it, and you give, provide, just like a food to human being. You need to provide quality food to human being so it will be healthy. You need to provide quality data for the machine so that it will produce the results with quality that you expect. The next step, the second step, we have provided data. We need to provide the algorithm. 
So we shortlist the algorithm that we want the machine to work with on this data uh, based on uh, two things. One is simply we think what is the suitable algorithm for this. Usually we won't come up only with one algorithm, we will come up with multiple algorithms and then we should uh, do trial and error in order to choose the right one. Uh, then we have all this data that we have provided to the computer and we have also chosen a few algorithms to provide to the computer but we need also to choose the specific features which we want our, our algorithm to focus on. So if we have uh, animals, uh, if we have a lot of data about animals, let's say we have all the Wikipedia pages about animals, then maybe we want to focus on the color, on the size of the animal, of the height, and of the species of the animal. So we are tuning the parameters that we are going to focus on this is, you can think of it as some kind of data preparation. After we have done all these steps, what is left is to build the models and run them in order to produce our results. The next term is the tabular data form. The tabular data form is one of the most common ways to look at uh, data. It's simply two dimensions. One dimension is the data point and another dimension is the variables. So <clears throat> the variables are simply what you choose. A, to focus on on the data. So you can focus on, as we said, on the color of the animal, on the height, on the species, and the data points are simply uh, multiple data points. I mean, we have one animal, second animal, third animal, and each animal with its features. A, the term a variable is also known as attributes and also known as features. So if you hear of features, if you hear of attributes, if you hear of R variables, it's all the same. It's the things we look at and focus on the data. We focus on specific things so that we are going to get, get uh, more accurate. After all, it's not enough to look at something you need to understand what you are uh, look it, looking at, at least in supervised algorithms. And the rows are simply the uh, data points. We have four uh, variable uh, types. Uh, one is a binary. A binary means that, remember, variable types are the same as uh, uh, features and the same as the attributes. So when we look at the data, we can have a binary data, which is two options. It doesn't have to be, if you're a programmer, true or false, a binary can also be black or not black. Okay, it can be any two things that you choose, simply a binary. Another thing is categorical. Categorical means, let's say, the set of colors. So we have blue, red, green, but you have a, a specific amount of set. Note that we uh, funnel out, which means we start from binary, and we move forward into a fan out um, variable types which include more and more uh, space. The next one is integer. Integer is simply a distinct uh, number, one, two, three. And the last one, the last variable type is a continuous. Continuous is simply a continuous variable, so it's the most spanning uh, variable. This is a good way to formalize it. You could formalize the variable types in any way, but it's a really good way because now you can correlate them to standard programming uh, languages. So after we have uh, decided on the algorithm and we have prepared the data, we need to select the variables. Why do we need to select variables at all? And our term here, remember we're focusing on terms, our term here is variable selection or feature selection or attribute selection. You will hear many times feature selection. Feature selection is the process that you have too many variables in the data. Think of an animal, you have too many things to describe on it, but you want to focus on specific stuff, the height of the animal. So if you will focus on all the features, then the algorithm will have too much data to process and it will be slow and also wrong. So you focus on specific uh, features. You shortlist the important uh, ones. Often this is done with simple trial and error. You do, not uh, you do not necessarily know in advance what are the features. When you do a feature, <coughs> feature uh, engineering, 
you can uh, group uh, items based on uh, species, for uh, example. So feature engineering is the fact that you don't have the raw features in the data, so you do some grouping based on species, and this will allow you to look at uh, stuff from a, a different feature which does not exist, exist directly in the data. And this is very helpful because sometimes you need to group maybe by uh, days or group uh, by month. So it's better to look at the features which are related to that uh, grouping. The next term is simply dimension reduction. Dimension reduction means you have multiple variables and you combine them to a one condensed information in smaller variables. All these, all, all these steps that we are making out in order to make our algorithm run faster, run smoother and be more correct. So we are focusing on the features and we are grouping them and we are reducing dimensions so that we are more focused on the problem that we have. We can solve the whole world, we can solve a subset of this world, so we want to focus on this subset of the world which we are solving. Next term is missing data. When you have missing data, first you should understand that you will always have some uh, missing data. And when you have this uh, missing data, you have a few options. From the good option, we will go scroll from the good options to the bad one. Okay, the first is the good is simply to uh, approximate this uh, data. You can even compute it. Um, Mm, you can compute the data because, because the missing data because you might have related other processes which have had some feature A and you see that when they have feature A they have feature B. So you can compute uh, what feature B would be and this is the best because it's best to work with some data which is more correct than to work with an incorrect data or simply missing. If you think thought to remove this data, then try to avoid it. Try to put that extra effort into computing this missing data. This was our uh, first session, session about uh, data science. In the next session, uh, we'll scan the different algorithms which are commonly used in data science and when to use them. And uh, Please see uh, below the resources I was uh, using in order to uh, formulate and summarize this uh, short uh, data science uh, sessions. Uh, so below are links to my uh, resources where I took the material form and those are great resources. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next session.